morning around the world, YouTube land, Facebook land. We are live. It is the British Isles Council of Prophets broadcast your weekly pouring in of revelation at the deep end. So I am joined by the glory that is Sarah Wren and the beauty, the beauty that is Phil Sanderson. Is that the right way? Can we swap our mind? We say the beauty that is Sarah Wren, the glory that is Phil Sanders. And will we go that way, right, guys? How are you both? Good, thank you. Really good to be with you guys. I'm, I'm just a little disturbed at being called a beauty. That's, that's <laughs> so good. <laughs> Great. Well, make sure you are in the comments, my friends. Um, we have two Northern Irish, one English. Uh, Sarah, you're right down the south of England. Phil's right up the Highlands North. Could you be any more far apart in the British Isles, but yet completely in unity of spirit? Amen. 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 And I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay, so not in terms of unity of spirit, but geographically. Uh, okay, so we've got Somerset, Peterborough, the Dominican Republic. Oh, my friend, Dr. Janelle. Phil, could you point to the Dominican Republic accurately on the map? Um, it, it's in the Caribbean, isn't it? The Dominican Republic. We're, I think. Now, now we're <laughs> going to show our guests. Can we point? Sarah, have you, can you point to it on the map? No, geography is not a strong point. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Geography is not a point. California, we could definitely point to in a map and get right. Norwich, yes, we could do that as well. Norfolk, yes. Limerick, Ireland. Well, I could do a fair run with Limerick in northern in, in Southern Ireland. Kenya, we could probably point to that in, uh, on a map as well. You're super welcome, all of you. Worcestershire, where the sauce is from. So there we go. Anyway, how cold is it with you? My hands are literally freezing right now. Me too. Yeah, it's very, it's very nippy. You look like you're well wrapped up, Sarah M. Yeah, I've got fur, <laughs> Not me, or not me. Not fur. No, just, no, just, just in case we. Not fur. No animals. for this broadcast. Yeah, no. <laughs> I know, and literally, we've got an app for putting our heating on, since we, which seems to be quite elevated. Anybody else work an app for putting your heating on? I think that's the way it's going. No, we have heating wars. So I go onto the app and put them all on. David goes onto the app and puts them all off. He's on the comments. Great. So I think he's actually driving and watching this. So if he comments, he shouldn't be. Oh, hi from India as well. Good to see you. Now. We've had some technical issues. It should have been Kevin McStay. Hi, Kevin. His, we could not get his computer to work. So Phil has binded on at the last minute. Um, so uh, can I put you on the spot, Phil? Will we start with you, even though we don't know what's going to come out of your mouth, or will we start with Sarah? <laughs> I think definitely start with Sarah. <laughs> definitely start with Sarah. Sarah Wren. Okay. Elevate with the word of the Lord. Yeah, well, I I am still living in a word I bought for the last broadcast about the immense grace in prayer right now and the focus for prayer. And we, you know, it's not like we don't know that prayer is important. It does, it's not like we're not praying or we haven't been praying, but there seems to be this real emphasis in the spirit right now. And, mm -hmm. and literally just as I it was coming on and we were trying to sort out the tech, the Holy Spirit said to me, there is such a swirling in yeah. nations and there's such a stirring and mm -hmm. we are going to get caught up in two things. We are either going to get caught up in the stirrings and the swirlings of what God is doing. And we're going to tap into that through real focused and intentional prayer. And as we do that, it's literally like a bird in flight getting lifted. And suddenly yeah. as we come into and, and, and grab hold of prayer to in the grace that is this now season for it, we are going to be lifted to see above and not feel underneath the incredible pressures that are swirling. Or 
we're not going to access the grace and the thing for prayer and we are going to be subject to the circumstances and the pressures that are swirling and creating um so yeah I think that's very helpful and, and it's a great direction of travel and we uh, thank you for it. And I think we can all say, yes, we, we, we know that there have been moments where we've been under the pressure of the season rather than who I've caught. And I love your analogy there, Sarah, of the bird, you know, that actually either I'm going to have a real sense of like, whoa, I was made for this yeah. season yes. or yeah you're going to go, I don't think I can survive. Yes. And the responses seem to be completely opposite because wartime demands that either I learn fast how to navigate it, woohoo, I'm going to catch the wind, or I am just going to be in a puddle on the floor. Um, so we're going to jump into how do we catch the wind um, yes, I think, Karen, you're right on YouTube. Eagles arise. Um, how we catch the wind to pray the right thing, think the right thing, feel the right thing, rather than the catastrophe of overwhelm. Can I tell you, you are needed, my friends. You are needed. Your voice is needed. Your decrees are needed. Your agreement in faith is needed. Your community needs you. Um, your God has a requirement to bring the best out of you in this time. He didn't put you through what you went through to be a puddle on the floor during this yeah. season. You are necessary for the purposes of the King of Kings. It is Laura Beth Malloy. You are right. It is all hands on deck. But can I tell you, for some of us, and you can wave at me if this applies, it's knife edge. It is knife edge stuff, isn't it? Will I, will, yes. I, will I fly or will I flounder? Yeah. Phil yeah. Sanderson, we're so, coming in here. Top tips. So last night I have the stream, and in the stream I am seeing this these walls, and these walls are being repaired as I'm watching the stream. And what I'm really conscious of was that the areas that kind of like I had a smooth overlooking, uh, there were crenellations that were being put in place. Those are the the the, the bits that you hide behind to fire your your, your bow and your arrows uh, from at the enemy. Um, you know the, the sort of the bumpy bits on top of a castle, uh, and it's like the Lord is creating crenellations at this time for us as. His sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you just say the Lord is creating crinolations? I yes. think that's the right word, isn't it? The, those, well, those, I think you better explain to us. You, yeah. you mean bumpy things. Those are the bumpy bits on top of the wall in a castle, right? Those are the, 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 the crinolations. And those okay. are the spaces that you hide behind whenever you shoot your bow and arrow at the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a sense in which what the Lord is doing is a lifting us up and a soaring us but the 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 wisdom to know where is the safe place to be protected in the midst of it yes. as we soar as we're in that elevated position and you know one of the prayers that that i've been praying a lot recently is lord keep me hidden under the shadow of your wing yeah. keep me in that 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 place of coming under your presence coming under your shadow coming under who you are so that I can wage a good warfare yeah. because I'm waging my warfare from being in a place of covered by the presence and in the presence yeah. rather than just kind of jumping out like a madman and yes. trying to take down every demon left, right. And yes. and, you yes. know, it's, it's a, it's a, a much better, healthier place to be. And it's yeah. a much more effective place to be. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So top tip number one, if we're taking notes and for our um, producers in the background, top tip number one, the prayer of the moment is hide me at the right time. Hide me emotionally from things that will overwhelm me. Hide me from the evil darts of the enemy. Hide me from uh, news broadcasts that might, that I don't have the capacity to know what to do with. Let's get very like on it, but expose me to where you need uh, a good strategy and a prayer and a, a, a strident force coming forth. So hide me, but also expose me when I need to come out and fight. So, so we're starting with 
a prayer of great wisdom and balance. Hide me when I need hidden, but yeah. show me where I'm to fight when I need to fight. It's a strategy prayer, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Top tip number one. Yeah. Number two, Sarah Ann. I, I really want to pick up on that. It's something that in our training at Healthy Prophetic, we do I talk about all the time, particularly when we're talking about moving into warfare prayer, yeah. is because if you are prophetic and you see, just because you see doesn't mean it's yours. Very just good. Just you see it doesn't yes. mean it's your assignment. And, yes. you know, early days of really getting into prophetic warfare, praying, I got my head kicked in again and again and again because I thought that everything that I was seeing was mine to address. Yeah. And, yes. it, and it isn't. It mm. is like I, I'm prophetic, so I see. So then it's it's coming and partnering with the Holy Spirit and saying, is this mine and can I take it? Yeah. Or do I need others? Yeah. Do I need good. others with me? And if so, who are they? Where are they? How do we do this? We, you know, um, there's been this massive release of mobilization of prayer. Yeah. And we as prophets have been talking so much, haven't we, about being together, being united, not being yes. isolated. Yes. And that that goes especially true when we enter into warfare. There are some things you can take down on your own because the spirit of God says is OK. I'm with you. You can you can deal with that. You can attack that. But actually, a lot of the time, we need to wait and go to him for the correct strategy yeah. Yeah. to take yeah. something out effectively. And then we won't keep doing the highs and lows of warfare and being getting our heads kicked in all the time and then getting frightened of it and hang, having to regroup. So I yeah. really like that, Phil, um, that, that piece of wisdom there. I, I think also, whenever we understand what warfare is, it's really, and I think I've mentioned this before, it's about speaking divine order into demonic chaos. It's it's yeah. shifting the, the, the balance of what has domination in a place from chaos to, to order and and you know you, you see you see this in, in some sense in, in, in Genesis one. You know, you have the you know, God making the heavens and the earth and the spirit of the Lord hovering over the waters and the, war the waters were formless and void. So you have this kind of, this voidness, this waterless and, and you know, the seas throughout scripture, this, this metaphor for, for chaos. And, and, and then the word of the Lord gets spoken into the chaos and then order comes forth as the word of the Lord gets spoken out. Now that job of the prophet then is to speak the word of the Lord in order the chaos gets divided it gets uh that there is there is there is the the divine order that comes in and you see in in the order of creation you know uh god makes this day one and it's good and it's good and it's good and he gets to man and it's very good and then he rests so there's this whole idea that sabbath is the manifestation of divine order so sabbath yeah, yeah. is manifestation of divine order yeah. so whenever we're speaking from a place of sabbath rest as a state that we operate from not yeah. something that we move from two from two it's it creates that divine order and releases that sabbath mm -hmm. rest over whatever we're praying over over whatever we're speaking mm -hmm. into so that the that divine and sabbath's a multi-dimensional concept in the bible so it's it's it isn't just rest because Jubilee is part of Sabbath, right? It's part of the concept of Sabbath. It's it's peace, it's freedom, it's release for captives, yes. it's sight to the blind. And yes. it's all that and it all comes from the declaration of the word of the Lord speaking order into chaos and very often praying order into that place. Yeah. yeah. Very good. So I mean, these are some great top tips. I would add a top tip here. I think um let's just say this. When we read the book of Revelation, we understand that there was this phrase that goes, then war broke out in heaven. And you can assess that um, eschatologically in different ways. 
But we understand that even the heavenly realms know war and no rebellion and they know what ego does inside. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we understand the revelation, then war broke out in heaven. And we also line that up with Matthew when Jesus talks about there will be wars and rumors of wars. You have to understand, therefore, you cannot hide away from this. Mm -hmm. You cannot bury your head in the sand and say, I will just rest in the love of God and it will just disappear. No, 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 no. Is that sense that this is our new normal. Conflict is part of what scripture prepares us for. And therefore, in all of that, I need to say, this, you're right, Sherry, what I'm really saying is there's no siloing away. There's no permission to become an ostrich. And there's no really healthy place to say, well, um, I'm just going to be caught up and I'm just going to partner with an escapism mindset. If no you have an escapism mindset, you need to say, God, burn it out of me right now. I now need to come and figure out what my responsibility is in the days of war. And I would I would want to say this. When men, when God goes to war, or, or God is releasing a consequence, or God is releasing a justice, or God is releasing a punishment, whatever God is doing, we have to say, well, God, we bless your wisdom that you know what you're doing. When man is wrongly involved in violence, let me say this and track with me. Man wants genocide above relationship Mm -hmm. man wants victory above reconciliation Mm -hmm. man wants ego over the blessing of everyone Mm -hmm. and so when we come to man-led war which is about ego bloodthirstiness Mm -hmm. victory genocide subjugation of other nations when you see the fullness of evil man, there is really only one prayer you can pray. And that is Luke chapter one, verse 17. And you start to pray, turn the hearts towards each other. Yeah. Because it is in the turning of our hearts away from each other that we think war is acceptable. Mm -hmm. It is in the turning of our hearts away, saying, I want my victory, and my victory will come at the price of your death. My victory has the right to have bloodthirstiness in it. My victory has the right that I don't care what happens to you. When man wants victory, its end point is always a genocide. But God's version of victory is that hearts turn. And so it, let me read it. He will go forward <coughs> in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents, their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous. Are you hearing this? To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So when we look at the borders between nations and we look at rockets and bombs going over, we look at genocidal tendencies, which come from this desire that I might win in a certain bloodthirsty way. The warfare prayer is God, turn the hearts. God, turn the hearts. Now, if you want to bind a bloodthirsty spirit, fine. Uh, Some of us will do that. If you want to bind a violent spirit, fine. Some of us will do that. But if you are not happy with that direct head-on punch against the demonic and you want a different strategy, I would say, pray, turn the hearts, turn the hearts, Mm -hmm. turn the hearts each other's humanity turn the hearts to see each other's value turn the hearts to the wisdom of god turn the hearts turn the hearts god you have said in the old testament and the new testament this is how i would pray god you have said and sometimes you know when we're looking at daniel 7 we can go to the lord and we say god arise from your
your throne. We can go there in our prayer. God, arise from your throne. And you have said that there will be a day in the earth where you turn the hearts. So my prayer is that that is today. My prayer where there's war that is led by man's desire for victory, that you alone, God, know how to turn the heart. So that would be what my instruction for how you pray, understanding that it comes from a genocidal tendency because I want victory above everything. Phil. Yeah, and I think you, you see this so much because you have this connection between uh, war and the, the spirit of politics, which seeks to divide, which seeks to polarize, which seeks to tear yes. apart. And to 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 tear apart. And I mean, you and I, Emma, we grew up in a place where where we saw that just every single day. But it was the yes. people who were making the decisions to lay down that and to pick up something else. Yes. To, to turn to one another, to actually yes. practice forgiveness, even though it cost that was making the difference. And it wasn't the politicians that yes. were that were winning anything it was it was the people who were choosing to lay down hurts to lay down brokenness to lay down resentment and bitterness and 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 all that stuff that goes with it, all that toxic stuff yes. that is actually the side effects that destroys generations rather than just mm -hmm. a, a solitary generation yeah. and yes. you know whenever that is laid down then you get to pick something up that's actually beautiful. That's actually, you know, it's it's beauty rather than ashes. And you know, I'm thinking uh, in terms of the 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 war narrative of the Bible and how upside down it is compared to the war narrative of the the the, the world. You know, there's there's um, we'll be doing nativity plays and stuff like that in church over the next wee while, and you have that that declaration. Uh, the angels appear to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest and yes, on yes. earth peace to men, right? But whenever Jesus is going into Jerusalem, you see this in Luke 19, that's mm. flipped. Yes. And it's it's glory to God in the highest and peace in heaven. Now, yeah. why is there a need for peace in heaven? Because what Jesus is doing is causing conflict in the heavenly realms. What Jesus is doing is staring up what's going on in the heavenly realm so that that war in the heavenlies is moving from having complete dominion on the earth to actually something's being done about it now and then of course this comes in with the, with the whole concept of the church being being the ecclesia god's war council on earth that is is it can be different now because of what jesus has done yes things can be different now because of what jesus has done yes I, I think that the hard thing, Sarah, and we'll come to you now, is the hard thing is we are going to see wars that God has permitted because God does use war for consequences and, and, and solutions and for the purposes of redemption and for the purposes of, of punishment. And I, I think in all of it, the, the prayer for harvest, we've talked about a lot. You must always be contending for the harvest, but you must always be contending for the hearts to turn because in it, you deal with the very, very core of man-made war, which is always mm -hmm. an ego-driven rebellion to make themselves greater. Uh, whether it's I'm feathering the nest of my empire, or um, but isn't it? But war, war is about ego and rebellion, which looks like I must have a victory to protect myself, and that is a that is a rottenness in the heart. So when you understand that war is a rottenness of rebellion in the heart against those that God has made, where your need for victory trumps and everything else. You, you understand that is that a heart changing prayer that must be released on the earth? We are understanding roots here. So when we're talking about intercession, we're understanding if I can pray for the hearts of men, I can actually go to the root of all genocide. Yes. Amen. Sarah. Amen. I think there's something here that we can access as as powerful prophetic people we we seek to actually not just pray prayers of peace but actually 
manifest even in our own lives and situations because how how does things actually get earthed changed outworked you know how does that happen that happens in if we think 1 corinthians um 14 verse 1 you know even in our prophetic gifts even in being prophets even in being prophetic people every single thing has to be birthed out of love yes and we're only going to get that love in in the father's presence that's the only place we're going to get it and you know even as you were talking funnily enough there about um about the hearts of men i think even for us as we come into a place of prophetic intercession there's very often business in our own hearts and in our own lives that needs to be dealt with so that we can inhabit a Mm -hmm. peace that moves into a situation to change the dynamics of it to change the atmosphere in in maybe it's toxic family situation maybe it's a horrendous work situation whatever but it's it's coming into where we started where Phil was talking about that hidden place of warfare is coming into the Lord's presence enough to touch his heart so our hearts are changed so that our prayer I'm not being rude here but isn't a load of shouty hot air to do with my ego to do with me taking down you know all of that it's i think there's there's a challenge in the spirit at the moment that where we can inhabit who he is and bring it to birth and manifest it actually in life and that takes relationship and that takes faith yeah to do that yeah and i think if i if i push this um oh give me grace here as i try to express this I think we we look at war with a football hooligan mindset mm-hmm. rather than a biblical mindset. Mm-hmm. And so when we look at conflict, first of all, we're not very biblically literate, which is a it, which is a massive problem right now. But we we look at it with a football hooligan, them and us, right and wrong, good and bad. We, we look at it like a childish kind of uh, way. And yes, I have to have childlike faith, but I can't be childish in how I pray about war. And so rather than I take a side, you know, because to be perfectly honest, most of you have never thought of the difference between Russia and Ukraine a day in your life. You know, I never, th- you know, so there wasn't, you know, but, but somehow people managed to take a side and like a football hooligan takes a side. And therefore, the nuances of scripture was lost in that ability to say, God, could you turn the hearts firstly to yourself? But could you turn the hearts of the Ukrainians to the Russians? And could you turn the hearts of the Russians to the Ukrainian? And could there be even a wild sense of a celebration of each other and each other's cultural distinctives? And in that, can we soften the hearts enough to find God in the midst of it? And yet you and I partner with the political spirit about sides. And sometimes the Lord is saying, stop taking sides. Stop. Stop it and start to pray for turning of hearts. Mm-hmm. This is a key thing, actually, because you see this yeah. at the beginning of Joshua. You know, Joshua, he's rocking up. He's seeing Jericho. He's going to take down Jericho. And yes. he sees the commander, the host of heaven. And he says, whose side are you on? Yes. And he says, neither. 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 I'm not on your side. I'm not on Jericho's side. I'm on God's side. And there's a sense in which, by all rights, he should be on Israel's side. He is, you yes. know, the 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 these are the covenant people. They are being mm-hmm. obedient. They're trying to take the promised land, but yet the 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 captain of the host of heaven, the 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 the, the prince of heaven. I mean, that's this is Jesus we're looking at, right? He is he is saying, look, actually, I'm not on your side. 
I'm not on their side. I'm on God's side. So I'm going to make happen whatever the purposes of God are in this situation. Are, yeah, and I yeah. think that this is what divine order looks like. It looks like coming into alignment with God. It looks like coming into alignment with Jesus. And we can be praying things till we're blue in the face. But if we're not in that place of alignment with him, then we're going to be opposed to him. And yeah. I think some of our prayers in the church are actually anti-Christ in nature yes. because they are pro-political opinion in nature. Yes, come on. And then they, they position themselves against who he is in favor of what we desire or in favor of what we think is the best thing to, to, to be taking place because we've never stopped to try and work out what the will of God is within the situation. Yeah. Yes. And so I think, Sarah, as we come back to you, when we're talking about praying for harvest or, or praying, if we can put it back on the screen and um, look chapter one again, where it where, you know, Jesus is modeling this turning uh, ability to turn the hearts. We turn the hearts, we turn the hearts. I would say that is um, a prayer that's in line with pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fascinated by that scripture, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And what makes me kind of give a wry smile over that verse is the fact that we're only instructed in scripture to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because she's going to be in perpetual turmoil and war. So this sense of like, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get Israel into and Jerusalem into complete peace is, is a misunderstanding. No, it, 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 it God always is dealing quite firmly with uh, Israel. God is always holding his people to a very high standard. Uh, most frequently, God has got them shaking and on their knees and being led back to him. And so this prayer for pray for the peace of Jerusalem is an understanding that she's often rebellious. She's often willful. She's often not in right standing before God. So I'm just, I'm not always like saying I back without any thought of maturity. What I'm saying is I pray for for your heart, or I pray for the peace of Israel, I pray just on what's going on. I'm praying for her heart to find Jesus. That is in essence what you're praying there. Now, my father, senior theologian, dropped this bomb on me. Phil, you're our resident senior theologian. I will tell you what my dad said, and you can spar. And Sarah Ren, you can help us out too. Dad said this to me. <gasps> Big deep breath, everybody. He said this, when you read the word, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, my father reckons that that was about the infighting and the factions between the 12 tribes. And that that prayer was about the bad behavior of the people of Israel. That that prayer was about their own naughtiness, I'm being polite, their own rebellion, their own anger, their own infighting, their own dislike, their own bloodthirstiness against each other. And that actually when the word of God says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it's a comment to the Israelis to not be so petty, small-minded, argumentative and violent. Okay, so <laughs> I, 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 I say that's I think, what my dad said. <laughs> I I think that there is wisdom and truth in that, and I yeah. in the in the sense that you want to pray for peace in the household, you just don't want your kids fighting, strangling each other, you know. That's so there's it. that there's that sense of yes. uh, the the peace, but why Jerusalem? Jerusalem because yes. it's the place that God chooses for His dwelling. It's the the, yes. mount, the mount of assembly, the Harmohid. You know, it's the sense of that place of assembly, that place of authority, that place of of uh, speaking out. And it comes back to a very, very basic principle. You can't speak order into a situation outside if you don't have order on the inside. That's right. The, it's the peace that passes all understanding flows from within and then touches what's out with. And uh -huh. so God's wanting Jerusalem as the place of his dwelling to be a source of blessing to the nations, but it can't do that if it's continually fighting with itself. Come on. Now, there's internal fighting, 
God doesn't want that. But sometimes if we are representing God, we will attract conflict simply because the enemy doesn't want us being in that place. And it's the it's the uh, Psalm 68, you know, O many peak mountain of Bashan, why do you look up with hatred upon the mountain that the Lord has chosen for himself, right? Yes. And so there's the, the internal peace that needs to flow out. So whenever we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, let's expand it to the place of God's dwelling. So yes. the individual believer, the church, we're praying... It. We're praying for the internal life of God to be made manifest on the inside so that we can be transformed from glory to glory as yeah. the new creation is being created with on the inside of us. And we are made more conformable to the image of Christ. And then we can start turning the Valley of Baca into a place of streams. We can start bringing transformation to the world around us. Very good. I love what you're saying there, Phil, and um, that sense of um, we are praying for something in the heart of a situation to want to be tender um, to each other and peace in our in our own homes first. Yeah, very good. Sarah? Yeah, amen. Um, we, we, we're talking again there about actually manifesting something so yes not just we're not just operating in something up, up there in the spirit yes it's actually coming down through our lives and i absolutely love that and i think what i was thinking as you were sharing there phil is like and where we started the broadcast from actually what what if what do we do to say the first point of change or transformation here is to the, acknowledge the truth of the situation. Yeah. You know, I think I think as Christians, I think in that's a real stumbling block for us because I think sometimes we want to acknowledge we acknowledge the truth of the situation or the reality. Let's put it that way: the reality of a situ situation, and then we can get stuck there. Or yeah. We do the other thing is we're like, well, I'm just going to ignore the reality of the situation because we want to be in faith, right? And we're gonna, so we're gonna ignore that. And I think part of manifesting the peace or love or whatever it is that is going to actually shift and change situations is it says we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So we have to acknowledge where we are, the reality yes. of where we are, and confess that, acknowledge that before the Lord, and invite the Holy Spirit to come and move us through into the place yes. where we can receive what we don't yet have. Because we yes. may not have the faith. We may not have the understanding. We may not have what yeah. the resources, whatever it is, but our starting place is the truth and inviting him to be all of the things that we are not so that that transformation can come forward and yeah. so, that, so that the spirit of God can manifest yeah. into our lives and situations in, in the nations where we're living and what we're, we're doing. I think, um, I know we're over time, but I think it's worth re resolving this, you know, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, meaning you have got to start in your own heart. you are got to start in the petty, arrogant football hooliganism nonsense. And you've got to learn what it is to love relationship and reconciliation over man-made victory. You've got to love that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in all of that, uh, having grown up as as Phil did in in Northern Ireland, having grown up in a divided, war torn society, Phil, you and I stood at the graves of civil war. You mm -hmm. and I have lists of friends that are not alive because of bloodthirsty ego. I want victory at all cost spirits, and the perpetuation of ego. And calling it victory um, puts more people in the grave ahead of their time without meeting Jesus Christ as their savior. And so when, when Sarah is talking about manifesting something, I think things start to tip 
when the people of God, as happened in my home nation, start to say, I think I'd like to speak reconciliation. Yes. I think I'd like my own tongue burnt. Amen. So I'm not a football hooligan taking sides. Mm -hmm. I think how bite I speak well for me of Catholics. Mm -hmm. How about a speaking well of Russians, Chinese, Egyptians, Koreans, Palestinians? How about that? How about a sense of, I think you might have value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that we are better in a negotiation reconciliation place. I think you might have something that I don't have. Yes, right. And it was in the individual hearts of the Catholics and Protestants in Ireland who were so in pain at the bloodthirsty ego of war. Yeah. I must have victory. We must assassinate all of the ones on the other side. Victory means death. High about biblically victory means my own mouth starts to say there's another solution here yes. and it's not assassination and genocide and killing. Mm -hmm. And but that must start here. Come on. Phil. So we have been talking about building of battlements on walls we've been talking about soaring in the high place we've been talking about the peace of jerusalem we've been talking about yeah. uh getting moved from the inside dealing with tribalism almost within our own hearts yeah. i think it's worthwhile if to sum all this up i just read psalm 122 Go because for it, psalm 122 right? is where the prayer for the peace of jerusalem peace comes from yeah yeah this is a song of a sense of David. Yeah. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Yeah. So we're talking about the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city that is bound firmly together, for which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, yeah. as was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Get this. Their thrones for judgment were set. The thrones of the house of David. That ties it in with, with Daniel 7. P pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May there be secure, may they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say peace be within you. So mm. peace be within you. For yeah. the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. Yeah. And within this psalm, why are we praying for the peace of Jerusalem? We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem for the good of the house of the Lord. Yeah. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem for the tribes to come together up towards the assembly of the Most High. Yeah. And there's, there is a gathering in this psalm and yeah. it's saying you need to come to a safe place. Yeah. That's why we need to pray for this piece of Jerusalem. Yes. And it's the prayer. It is so powerful. And if you don't know Psalm 122, go and read it and meditate on it and, and look at some, just even some entry level um, commentaries on it on Google. But that sense within this Psalm of the decree that ends bloodthirstiness and and ugly side take in my translation it says you pray this for the sake of all of the family and friends in other words this is not just about oh can one group have dominance against each other or can one group be held up as higher than another group i mean this is a great prayer that is looking about an understanding of the wider context of of peace in a region and peace across the peoples and uh, in other words getting off the high horse of genocidal tendencies which i think i am worried is in the people of god that we have genocidal tendencies 
because we have ego and we desire victory in the natural more than we desire reconciliation. And that really is the point of today. Whenever, uh, recently I was speaking with my dad. My dad is a Presbyterian minister. Uh, your dad's a Baptist minister. And there's, there, he was telling me, he was reading this book about the start of the Troubles. So the trouble started in Londonderry in 1969. Yeah. They moved over to Belfast a week later. And he's he's reading this book and he's reading about how uh, the troubles are breaking out in Belfast, but the clergy, Catholic and Protestant, went out and were encouraging people to, yeah. to, to go go back in, into the, uh, the their homes. And he's suddenly he's reading this book and he's thinking, this this sounds very familiar. Then it registered with him, gosh, I was there. I was one of the clergy that was helping yeah. people go back into their homes, you know? Yeah. And that sense yeah. of where we are in history is the place where we need to be in the place of reconciliation because one day yeah. we're going to read God's book and God's book is going to tell us exactly where we are. Yeah, yes, yes. And how yeah. we want to be seen in heaven and how we want to be remembered in heaven is dependent very much on how we position our hearts here on earth. So important about eternal destiny. It's funny, isn't it? The, these kind of things do bring up those senses of being raised in conflict. And my father the same. And I remember when they put the bomb in Coleraine and um, in the street by my dad's church. And and uh, I don't think you ever forget the sound of a bomb or the aftermath of, of picking through one. And, and many of you will have um, been there too in your own nations in civil war. And um, the, my father's first response was, although the at that point we didn't know the bomb was right by my dad's church, but um, he, his first response was he put his dog collar on to identify himself as a minister in the town. And he went out uh, in the dark um, as uh, all the sirens are going off because he wanted to go and minister, even though they put it right by our building, to go and minister cross-culturally, minister yeah. reconciliation. And that sense of pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for the prosperity of the world, which is really what's in that Psalm 122. Uh, and can I say now, I'm going to speak directly to you. Some of you are on the wrong side. And some of you are on the side of ego, genocide, bloodthirstiness. Some of you are on the side of politics in error. Some of you are on the wrong side of reading scripture. Some of you are in false responsibility and the wrong side of what God has asked you to pray. And some of you are now partnering with a judgmental critical spirit and an assassination spirit that wants people groups wiped out. That is not the side of God right now. Right now, it is God, turn the hearts to you and turn the hearts to each other that we may have the biggest harvest rather than the genocide of nations. Amen. Amen. Sarah, do you want to add anything else or will we wrap up? I think that's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. We did go on for quite a bit longer, but we're only with you once a week these days on whatever day of the week it is. Who knows? Tuesday. We love you guys. Make sure you like this. Make sure you sure you share this and make sure you've put your agreement behind it because you know we just hit some um, holy cows and slaughtered them. We will see you very soon, my friends. Bye. Oh, we're still live. I think our producer must have, have fallen off the wagon. We could just go for another hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> just go for another, we could just go for it. We could just go for another hour. Sam, Sam, we're saying goodbye. I bet his computer's crashed and he's having a massive time, a massively hard time. So um, will I get him on the phone? Somebody's saying Tamar saying just go uh, uh, Tamar, just saying keep going, keep going. <laughs>